One of the questions that comes up time and time again is, how do I get started with home labbing? This is a great question, and I get asked this all the time in my live streams, but I figured I'd answer it here. First, I think we need to clarify what a home lab is. So what is a home lab? I think in its simplest terms, it's a sandbox where you can build, play, and learn about technologies without the fear of breaking things. It's a place where you can experiment safely outside of your normal environment or your work environment. You can use it for personal projects, self-learning, growth, or even just as a hobby. Many people use it for self-hosting services, networking and firewall, storage, game servers, web servers, media servers, virtualization, containerization, certifications, security tools, and many, many other use cases. And as far as hardware goes, it can be as simple as an old computer, a low-powered Raspberry Pi, or even a complete clustered multi-server rack with networking. So it can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. But before you do anything, did you know your first home lab could be free? Free home lab? Yes, free. But listen, since we've already established some of the things you can do with a home lab, you'll need to take a second and think about what the goals are for your home lab. What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to learn? Is it going to run 24 seven or just on demand? How many users will you have? And so having an idea of what you're trying to accomplish will help determine the size requirements for your home lab. But let's start with free. Everyone loves free, right? Well, the easiest way to get started for free could be on the machine that you're on right now. And it's with virtualization. Virtualization allows you to create many virtual machines as if they were physical machines on your network. You can create Linux guests or Windows guests that run on that machine as if they were on your network or not, depending on how you configure networking. And you can also create as many machines as you have resources for. The nice thing about this option, besides it being free, is that you can shut these down and spin them up on demand. So if you only need to run a Linux server to do some testing, you can start it up and then shut it down. And the same goes for a Windows machine. And this is also a great way to start evaluating your needs to help you determine whether or not you need to buy something. And if you decide that you've outgrown virtualization or you need something on 24 seven, this next option is also free. And that's an old computer. Yes, an old computer. And so just to be clear, a server's not defined by its hardware, but defined by its role. And by definition, it's really just any computer that serves information to other computers. But Anyways, when using an old computer, you'd be surprised on how much compute you're going to get from it. Most old computers are more than capable of running workloads, and you'd be surprised at what people are giving away for free. The average computer lifespan is about five years, and a five-year-old computer can run quite a bit. This one that I'm using right now is almost five years old. And my first home lab computer was one that was destined for the trash until I asked my manager if I could have it. That computer was really old. Even back then, it was really old, but it was just enough to install Linux on and learn about Linux. And then shortly after, install Windows on and learn about file sharing and Active Directory. And then later on, become my router to learn about networking. And so sometimes old computers are just enough. And if it weren't for that one, I may not have a home lab today. So try not to rule out old computers. And while we're on the old computer topic, we may as well touch on the next one. And that's upgrading your current PC and then using your old PC as a home lab PC. The reason why I tell most people to do this is because you get two benefits. One, you get to upgrade the machine you use the most, this one. And two, you get a dedicated computer for a home lab. This is a pretty good value if you're on the fence about building out a home lab because you get all of the tech and performance games on the machine you use the most while setting aside your old one as a new home lab machine. And then if you decide that this isn't for you, you have the option to sell or donate that one to someone who needs it. And the reason why I recommend this one the most is because it's a great value. And speaking of great value, the next one I often recommend is a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pis keep getting better and better. And for a relatively low price, you get a lot of computing power. And there are so many projects you can run on a Raspberry Pi, whether it be on Raspbian or any other Linux distribution, it's unreal. And not only are they low in price, but they use a tiny fraction of power that traditional servers use and with a lot less heat. Raspberry Pis are a great way to get started with home labs and I highly recommend them. And if one day you decide you need some more compute or you don't want a home lab anymore, 
you can repurpose that Raspberry Pi to a million projects. I have a few in my environment right now. One used to run Pi Hole, but now I've repurposed it to the LED panel back there. And another, a Pi Zero, is still in my environment, doing a pretty critical task. And if you're interested, I'll have some links in the description below of Pis that work great. And so now we're jumping from one of the smallest, lowest price devices to one of the most powerful, biggest devices. And that's a dedicated rack mount server. And there are quite a few options here, so let me break this down. First of all, your server can be consumer grade hardware and convert it to a server by putting it inside of a rack mount case. This will allow you to rack mount that server just like any other server or networking equipment in your rack. And this is a great option if you have an old PC that you want it to fit nicely in your rack with your other equipment. And this is something I still do today. One of my servers is actually two PCs ago, it's almost eight years old, and I breathe new life into it by converting it to a server and putting it inside of a rack mount case. And these type of PC conversion servers work great for general purpose workloads. So for things like game servers, web servers, Kubernetes, Docker, virtualization, all of these things should work great in something like that. However, I will recommend against using something like this if you're going to use it as a NAS or use something like ZFS because you'll want ECC RAM in that server, memory with error correcting. And so this kind of feeds into the next option, which is enterprise class gear. And once you get to a certain point, you may start to look for that. And so when we talk about enterprise gear, we're talking about servers with multiple disks, backplanes with hot swappable hard drives, dual NICs, quad NICs, 10 gigabit NICs, dual processors with four, eight, 16 cores, dual power supplies, many high speed server fans, and lots of ECC RAM, sometimes hundreds of gigs, IPMI for remote management, and many more features that enterprises use to ensure that their services continue to run in a server like this. You could have lots of virtual machines running, each with lots of RAM, lots of CPUs, and lots of disk space. And if you end up going this route, you're gonna get a lot of compute. And you're gonna get a lot of these features we just talked about. There are some good deals out there. And although this might be more than you're looking for, you can get a really, really good value if you buy these used or refurbished. Because enterprises are deprecating these every day. They're looking for bigger, better, faster machines and getting rid of their old ones at a reasonable price. And so I too have used enterprise gear in my rack. And if you're interested, I'll have some links below to servers that are a pretty good deal. And so my home lab is actually made up of all of these things. I have old computers in my home lab that I've converted to servers. I have Raspberry Pis in my home lab, one that I've taken out and converted to another project. Then I have used enterprise gear and some custom bare bones servers. And this is part of the joy of having a home lab. It'll grow and change as your needs grow and change. You'll start to mix and match parts and pieces and brands and servers and gear and rack and networking, you name it, to build out your environment. And that's something else unique about most people's home labs. No two are the same. Most home labs are tailored to individuals' needs, and they're almost as unique as the individual who built it. And so that's why I really enjoy home labbing. I get to customize a whole entire environment where I'm the network administrator, I'm the system administrator, I'm the DevOps engineer, I'm the software engineer, I'm the cloud engineer in my own personal environment and without the fear of destroying someone else's environment. And although I've only scratched the surface on what a home lab is, what it can be used for, and how to build one, the possibilities are really endless. And I'm curious to know what you end up building or how you end up using your servers. And I'm curious what your environment looks like. So let me know in the comments below. And if you found anything helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Welcome. Welcome to my channel. I uh, just chatting right now about uh, about a lot of tech stuff. I think uh, we're, we're all over the board between Kubernetes, K3S, Docker, servers, um, possibly Blue Iris, Windows Server 2019. I'm all over the place, but I, I don't mind it because I have a short attention span sometimes. So it's it's nice to just bounce around from topic to topic. Uh, but yeah, hit me with your questions. Do you have a question about I mean, I, anything? I'll try to answer it.
And if not, I'll find someone who knows the answer. At least I'll try in the limited amount of time on stream that I have to find someone who knows the answer.